go in designer in today's video i'm going to go over the entire design process of the illustration you just saw i already have adobe illustrator fire up and i want to talk about the inspiration for today the inspiration came from uber noticed a couple of their illustrations on pinterest i saw that they have a very clean minimal style and i feel like my style is very similar so i'm going to try to get their style and then apply it to an illustration i want to draw in the last video we actually started from scratch in this video we're going to start with the sketch these are the exercise files if you want to follow along you can download them for free the link is in the description of this video it will take us five steps to actually get there we're actually going to create the shapes for the face then the hair then we'll have the clothes and actually add some detail to the illustration and actually finishing off this illustration by adding some grain texture to it so make sure to stick till the end if you want to find out how to get the free grain brush to use in illustrator if we take a look over the layers you can actually notice that we have the sketch on top i lowered its opacity to come around 30 to 40 percent and then i'm going to have the illustration elements below it because i still want to see the sketch while i draw every single element to break down the style it feels like the shapes are very simple and super clean you also have a lot of shapes intersecting with themselves they work pretty good together i'll actually use this color scheme i know uber doesn't really use red in their uh, illustrations that's why i wanted to create something a bit different and have something more contrasting using this red as the accent color and then i'll have the black and this light blue for the background elements let's start with the face we'll actually take the pen tool from over here zoom in to actually get a better sense of how this illustration should look like i'm going to actually start from the neck area right over here because i don't want to <laughs> create this curved line i'm actually going to create a straight path and have it intersect like so as you can see i'm following this sketch pretty loosely i don't want to get too tied in what the sketch actually requires me to do so with the direct selection tool i'm actually going to drag these handles to make them rounder this should give it a more pleasing look also i'll have it over here i'm not sure about the neck area because from the neck area you'll actually have the clothes coming in the ear in this case is pretty simple it's on a lips click and drag one and actually rotate it and increase its size a bit because i don't want to come to the hand later on i'm actually going to deal with it right now try your best to actually trace it with the pen tool i'm going to try to play a bit with negative space but we'll get to that later for the hair elements i'll actually switch to black and create an ellipse pretty much a perfect circle and then try to place it following the lines in the sketch and then while holding down the option key or alt you can actually make a copy a duplicate and i'll use the same one to actually create shapes that make up the hair make a couple of copies and then fill out the rest of the space with the same shape now select all of them go to window find the pathfinder option and from over here hit merge and that will merge everything there are a couple of elements right here that are left i'll switch to the direct selection tool actually select one point and hit backspace a couple of times to remove them i want to have this behind everything so right click arrange send to back now that we see the face i'll actually make this white i'll select it and with the eyedropper tool i'll sample the color in the background and move to the actual clothes i'll start with the hands and these will actually be a stroked outline that's going to have a pretty <laughs> a pretty big stroke so let's click from the middle of the hand and actually try to imagine where the bones are because that's where you should place these elements i'm not going to continue over here because this part of the hand is actually going to be an individual element that's going to be masked by the hand and the, the clipboard so with the shape selected let's swap the fill with the stroke and <laughs> right now this is a bit too small just one point let's have a hundred see how it looks we need even more maybe 200 make any kind of changes with the direct selection tool to make sure that you're kind of following along with the initial sketch if you want to make any changes like right over here i would like this part to actually come and be rounded to do that we actually need to select it with the direct selection tool and pull on these elements to actually get a rounded corner go to object expand and now you're going to create a fill shape out of all of these also create the shape that covers the torso start from over here let's try to mask those shapes off and now you might have noticed that here we have a separate element let's create a very simple element with the pen tool start from the hand and actually try to make it cover this part and this one as well close it off and let's sample the black with the eyedropper tool for the lower body over here i'm actually going to imagine the character having a dress so with the pen tool just create a couple simple shape and send it 
it behind by using command left bracket. We still need part of the hand over here. So with this selector, because I want to sample that color, I'm actually going to create a shape that's going to be behind everything. Again, select it and using command left bracket, you can send it behind everything. And now I can make the hand actually white. For the clipboard, you actually have this symbol in the middle, but once you skew it, I think it's going to be very hard to create that element from scratch. So we'll actually develop it here on the right hand side. I'll create a rectangle. I'll then make a copy, command C, command F, paste in front. Uh, this element is going to be black. So using the eyedropper tool, I'm going to sample that. Now we need something in the middle that has a medical sign. Create a circle, hold down option and shift to actually have a good looking one. And, and now inside we'll actually create a cross. From the center, I'll hold down option or alt on Windows and create this shape, command C, command F to actually paste it in front. And while holding down shift, rotate it around. Let's select both of them and hit merge in the Pathfinder window. And now switching to the direct selection tool, I'll actually make a selection of all of these corners by holding down shift because I want to round the map a bit. With everything selected, go to the panel over here. Underneath the scale tool, you actually have the shear tool. While holding down shift, you can actually create a shape that's similar to what we have in the sketch. Now I'd like to send this behind until I see the hand. And the last shape that I need to define is actually the mask. Switch to the pen tool and actually start drawing elements. I'll try to go over everything that we have here. I would like for it to be red because I want it to stand out. I'll sample that red. Over here, you would like for the radius to actually go over the initial face. And now with the pen tool, I'll actually create the straps because I would like to mimic the idea that it's going in the hair uh, behind the ear. Let's go to the layers panel and actually disable the sketch to see what we got. We have the flat design illustration, but I would like to have some kind of separation between elements. So I'm going to use stroked outlines to do just that. Let's enable it again. I'll start from the middle, create the first one because it has red. I'll swap it up, double click on the stroke and actually make it white. Hopefully 10 points is enough, but from the stroke panel, I always recommend choosing a rounded cap and a rounded corner. Try to have this intersect with the other one as well. And the last shape I need to work with is actually this one. Disable the sketch and now you have the illustration. I also like how this kind of looks because you have a lot of negative space uh, right over here with the clipboard and over here with the hand. And now it's time to add some texture to the illustration. I'll open up the brushes panel and actually load up some of my brushes. I'll save one brush in this exercise file so if you want to use it you can actually download it for free if you want the other 22 you can actually download my bundle with grain and noise brushes for illustrator and photoshop let's load up arcadia and add this one i'll start with the ear so let's zoom in because it's going to <laughs> be pretty interesting to explain this because i want to draw inside and create some texture that i want to affect only the ear i'm going to click on draw inside mode and from over here i'll take the pen tool and start drawing a shape that follows along the base of it sample the black color and actually switch it up so now you have the stroke with the black color and actually click on it once right now it's a bit too much so double click inside it to get to the stroked outline and actually make it smaller. And if you want to add more layers, you can actually command C, command F to actually paste it in and move it around to get more interesting effects. Double click to get outside and now you have the ear with a bit of texture. I'll do the same thing for the face as well. With it selected, have the draw inside mode activated and I'll take the pen tool and we'll actually create texture on this side to see how that looks. Make sure to have a stroked outline that's black Create it once and then apply it again. Double click to enter inside it and actually make it smaller because I just want this part to, to have some kind of a texture. I'll make a copy just because I want to, to have more variety and actually make it smaller. I'll try to create the same thing with the mask as well because I want to follow along this pattern of texture. Actually switch it and make it white. So for any red parts, you'll actually want to have a white stroke. Go to the brushes panel and apply the texture. For the hair, I'm going to try something a bit different i'm going to actually create new shapes so let's create a circle over here i'll sample it to be black so you can't even notice it but i would like to use this to actually add some texture to the hair as well create a pad that goes around it select the brush and make sure to have a white stroke make it smaller because i would like again to have that effect of tapering command c command f to actually make a copy the nice part is that you can actually duplicate these shapes and make them smaller if you want to 
For the clipboard, the texture is going to actually help a bit because that way you can actually see where the cutoff point is. With the pen tool, I'll start from over here and go like this. Apply the brush, do the same thing over here, but I would like to have a wide brush because uh, I would like for this effect to continue over here. Create the path, actually place the grain. And even though for you, it might look pixelated over here, that's just the way that Illustrator renders out things. Once you place it inside Photoshop, the granulation is actually pretty fine. If you find yourself in the case where you can't actually draw inside, so for example for this element, for some reason you can't have that mode enabled, you actually need to merge it, so go to Window Pathfinder again. Once you merge it, you can actually have that option. For some variety, I also recommend changing the size from time to time and actually exploring different sizes for the brush to get more interesting effects. I'll also place some outside just because I want the effect to be a bit different. So with this one, this is outside of everything and I'll actually make it bigger to actually see how it impacts other areas as well. I'll create a few for this shape as well. This one, for example, is going to be way smaller because I don't want it to overlap with this part. After playing around with the brushes, this is the final result. Hope you liked this video and if you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe for more. Let me know in the comment section which version do you prefer, the one that's flat or the one with the grain. Thank you so much for watching, see you in the next one. Take care everybody, bye!